engaged our business with a local community by listening to what's happening in our community. We're fortunate we live, we work in our community, so it's as important to us as to what happens in our community as it is to our customer base. We have a unique relationship with our customers because we engage with them on a personal level. We understand their pets and as generally we get information in terms of their lifestyle and what's happening to them. That gives us an enormous opportunity to sort of see what's happening throughout the community. So areas that have concern, um, areas that they want support in, areas that um, you know we can do something and give back to the community, I think is really, really important. Some of the most successful um, initiatives that we've been able to run around mental health and around animal involvement. For example, we've helped in relation to supporting Hounds for Heroes, um, because we have a, a major army base next to us at Catrick. Um, so PTSD is a major issue. And so obviously animals are proven to give um, a fantastic um, support for, for people going through um, times of uh, sort of mental distress. Other areas that we've been able to work with is Dementia for Dogs through Dogs for Good. Um, and one of the, the most successful is that we were then um, approached by one of the local care homes um, who asked whether we would be able to support one of our residents to take their dog, um, as they've been recently um, admitted. Um, and by, because most care homes' attitude towards pets is no, um, because that's a simple answer. But actually, if you sort of get through that initial uh, barrier, you can actually work with people and come up with a workable solution. Solution. So we were able to support that dog in, um, you know, for, for that lady um, for uh, for three or four years, supporting on a seven day a week basis. That makes such a such a difference, um, you know, for, for people living with dementia, um, as well as raising uh, funds for obviously for the relevant charity. Um, and it's easy sometimes just to do charitable work and say, you know, that's great. But actually, what you need to is to go a little bit deeper because you live in a community, you want to be involved in the community. So we work with a local authority. For for a number of years now. Um, we're proud that we don't just work with the touch points that we would normally have in terms of licensing or enforcement and things like that. We work through social services department, we work through other um, areas of the local authority because they have a hub of activity um, for our town. So being able to have um, that reference point and being relevant to them means that we're able to support our community in many areas and look at ways that we can make a contribution. In terms of what inspired us to do this, we both come from public sector backgrounds, so we're both used to making a, making a difference to people and wanting to make a difference to our community. We live in our community, so it's in our interest to do something that's right and, and, and proper. And it's just about looking for the opportunities where it doesn't need to be a grand gesture, it, can only, it just needs to be little things where you can support things and to sort of say, you know, I've noticed and, you know, and supporting people along that way. I think the plans we have in place for increasing our community focus moving forward um, really come from reflecting on what's happened during the pandemic. Been a massive explosion in the UK in terms of animal ownership um, and the joy and the relief that they give people is immense. But there are pressures on terms of people um, keeping their animals. There are a lot of organisations and charities which support the animal itself, but there's very few in the UK that actually help people to keep the animals themselves. And we'd like to sort of explore that opportunity. And we are doing so with our local authority in terms of providing support through local food banks so that obviously it's not just people but it's also the animals um, that are being, being kept there. It's incredibly important connection um, between mental health and keeping animals um, and I think that's a, an area of focus that we really want to sort of home, in, home into in the next year and support. I would always recommend franchising to somebody who wants to start a local business. I came into it from a corporate background and a public sector background. My wife came into it from teaching. But ultimately, we knew very little about how to run a business. I think one of the things I've learned over the years is that franchising is a business in a box. And if you have the right um, passion to take it forward, you read the instructions and you have a ready-made business. It's that simple. Why did we choose Pet Pals? My wife made contact with Pet Pals and um, as she was coming up to her 40th birthday, she didn't know what she wanted to do, but she knew she needed a change from education. We contacted Pet Pals, um, the information came through, it was very professional, it was exactly what we were looking for, the instructions were fantastic, they looked very easy to, to formalise. So we spent a year doing the research and eventually we kept coming back to the same thing. Franchising is a community and within that franchise, you've got a community of people who've experienced every problem for your sector of business. And the ability to draw on that is um, immeasurable. And the other thing that came out of that as well is when we looked at resale values, we saw the ability that 
if we had a franchise, we had something to resell. So all of these things together, and the fact that it was a ready-made business in a box, it was a no-brainer.